What's up guys, Subdark here. Today we got a me VOD review. We are VOD reviewing a game from Subdark himself. Look, I've been on a tear recently in rank here. I can pull up my LP chart just for you guys, just to show you guys how much of a tear that I've been on. Uh, and this is a game here. Look at that beautiful chart. Just going straight up average 3.58 across the entire set. I'm kind of a beast. I'm kind of a beast, but you guys already knew that. Um, but today, I wanted to show off a game that I played a few days ago. This while I was still in the pits of diamond climbing out. But, you know, we got some cool people in this lobby. And Nico's in this lobby. Um, so, it's it's a fun lobby. But this is, a, this is a comp that I heard about because it was on Dish Soap's tier list website, tftacademy.com, uh, probably. Um, and I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll try this comp out this game. Because I get, like, an opener that kind of ends up making sense for it. Though it's not as straightforward as you would think. Uh, and I did really, really well this game. I was surprised, I was blown away by how well this comp did, because I honestly, in my head, thought this comp probably sucks. So let's watch the game, see what happens. Uh, we have a start here with Shock Treatment, uh, which I think whenever I'm playing AP, I just love this augment as my start. Uh, it gives you that tread immediately, and it's fantastic. Uh, just item in general to have, guaranteed. Uh, and then I want to make Shoujin here as well, which I think is just a decent AP item if you're playing around um, this Arcanist type setup. I was thinking, okay, maybe I could play around like Lux this game uh, in this position. I was like, yeah, maybe it's a Lux reroll game, though. Then I end up scouting this person, see Boiling Point. I'm like, well, I'm certainly not playing Lux this game. Um, so that's not going to happen, which is which is one of the reasons I think about pivoting into this comp. Um, the other thing that I will say before I get too far into the VOD as well is that if you subscribe to my VOD channel, link in the description down below, you guys would have seen this game early because it's one of my own games. This is a fantastic pickup, by the way. I get to take Rod here. This guarantees me death cap. I mean, you always want Rod when you're playing this type of stuff. Um, and th this shot probably is, is what really like, makes me think, okay, maybe I want to play this comp. I get the Soraka and I get the Zoe, who are both units that you want to play around this comp. Zoe's a fantastic Morello's holder. I love playing Morello Zoe. And then I can just make the Death Cap. This can even be my Zoe setup. It could just be Death Cap Shoujin Morello. And those can be my Zoe items. Then Static Ship can go over to the Soraka, who ends up being the duo carry when you play this comp. But yeah, VOD channel. We're posting VODs every single day uh, for my coolest games on stream. So, you know, if you're interested in seeing more of my content, uh, absolutely check it out. Get Lux 2 here, which it's kind of a head scratcher. I almost wish I hadn't hit Lux 2 here, because now I have to play it. The upside is that my board gets infinitely stronger, but it means I kind of have to sell this Ari, because I don't want to sell the Zoe and lose the, the Morello. And like, am I holding on to the Soraka? I end up pre-leveling here, because I do want to hold on to the Soraka. And I start building out the comp here. So you can see this seven unit core here. These guys, uh, Janna, and then uh, the other three costs, the ones that I already have, which are Zoe and, uh, and Diana. Actually, I don't have yet, but she will come out later. Um, it's actually a really, really interesting kind of weird duo carry comp where you play around the duo carry of Soraka and Zoe. Zoe usually is your primary, but you know, you'll see in this game, it ends up being quite interesting. Um, item wise here, I, I wasn't too blown away by any of these options. I end up just taking these components, uh, because they're on a Nico and Hey, now I have a second Nico and I, I want to play on the Nico anyway. Um, but I'm not really happy with it. I want some tank items here, especially for Diana late game. You really want stuff that just makes her live forever. Gargoyles, D-Claw, Spark can be fantastic on her, but we already have the static, so we don't need that. I also do end up frontlining the, or second rowing the Soraka here. This allows her to reach backline with her ult. The other thing is I really want to make sure that my backline is not getting targeted. Doesn't really end up making a diff here, but a, a cute little tech that you can do if you're ever trying to have Soraka hit, uh, you know, like a big clump on their backline. This is usually more important late game, but like, you know, in early game, it can be valuable. But yeah, I'm on a four streak here. I wish I could make 20, but I would have to sell the Nico, and the Nico's gonna be on my final board. So my thought is like, I really don't want to sell this Nico. But yeah, there's that other prison, by the way, with Porcelain plus Heavenly Spat as their uh, wandering trainer. So I'm like, I gotta get out of this Lux. There's no way I can play like Lux reroll from this spot just because, I mean, yeah, look, look at it. But the upside is we got to play an Arcanist board. We got to win streak, and hey, five streak. Sadly, only making 10 gold, but 5 streak is nothing to, to, to sneeze at. Is that is that the phrase? I think so. Maybe? Nothing to... something at. Uh, we get a random Rek'Sai 2 here, which I almost immediately think about selling, but then I'm like, actually, there's a world where my board is just Rek'Sai plus, yeah, this Rek'Sai plus Aatrox setup. So I'm going to wait a little bit. Um, you know, obviously, there are better things that we could play, but, you know, Rek'Sai might be the juice we need as far as frontline. We get another sword drop here, which is really kind of annoying. We get a decent amount of gold here, and so I'm like, okay, I have to make gold in this position. Um, but yeah, I'm not 
super pleased with these items. I have to reforge a sword, basically. I end up reforging it into a tier, which is pretty cool. Uh, this would allow me to make another Shoujin if I want. It could be an Archangel, it could be a Gumblade. I like Shoujin here and leaving the rod open for some kind of uh, potential frontline item. Um, and the Shoujin onto Zoe also feels really, really good. This is a fight. I wasn't sure if I wanted to early level here. And I think in hindsight, I definitely should have just early leveled here. I have a five streak to protect. I thought maybe that I was going to lose this fight regardless, but this fight ends up being really close. So I feel kind of bad. I think I should have just leveled here, sacked the two econ, added a Jax to my board, and that might have been enough to end up winning this fight, keeping my streak in my game. Could have been even easier. Um, Arcanist Crown, if I wanted to play Vertical Arcanist, I think you would take this. The Extra Static Ship isn't even that bad with Shock Treatment, but I wanted to try this comp out, so I decided to not opt for that, and I instead am going to opt for a Radiant Refractor here, Ref Refactor here, because this is going to allow me to make a Radiant Morellos if I want it. Item-wise here, uh, I still like really kind of need a Frontline Item. There's my Radiant Morellos, so I just take the Cloak here, but I don't actually make anything because there's still not a Frontline Item to make, but... Radiant Morello is one of the strongest Radiant items in the entire game. The numbers are just a little bit overtuned, and Zoe, who's going to be bouncing her spells all around the board, I think will do a ton of work with it. So I like this a lot. Uh, I almost want to roll in a spot like this. I end up picking up Jax too, which is kind of nice, but I, I don't have pairs of a lot of my units that I really care about. Even if I pick up something like an Alawi 2 here, the Alawi's going to come out of the board anyway later. Um, so I prefer to just roll on 7 and pivot into the entire board here. I'm just missing a few of the key units. I need to pick up the Zyra, I need to pick up the Riven, uh, and I need to pick up the Diana, and I think that's it. Yeah, those four fill out the last few slots. Actually, I think there might be one more, but we're, we're missing some of the units. Also, look at look at this fight, man. It's so tragic. It was such a close... I, I thought it was going to win, but the big issue for my board right now is my frontline is garbage. Uh, I have no frontline items made and no frontline upgrades made, so it's a little rough. I really, really, really would like to just pick up some kind of frontline item here. Uh, a D-Claw would be very solid. Uh, a uh, the uh, the Crown Guard would also be like a fine option, I believe. Uh, Steadfast Heart is also a fine option. I think I probably end up going for Crown Guard here. I don't remember 100%, but yeah, we, I want to go 7 in this spot, but now that I lost that last fight, I'm nowhere near win streaking. I'm actually like too poor to level here, so I think I'm just going to sit uh, on this board for a few more rounds. Wait till 4-1. Worst case, I'm like 60 HP if I take some horrible losses. And yeah, I do end up just making the Crown Guard here because I think it's a pretty good slam. Uh, this is actually a scary fight because I'm not well positioned for this guy's Lux. He gets to snipe uh, one of my backline units, the Soraka. At least my Zoe and my... Uh, my Lux live for a while, but then I get their Lux down to 1 HP, and then the Lux walks up into this guy's Lux hole. Like, please, man, please. It's okay. It's whatever. Um, but yeah, this is around when I start to worry a little bit. This guy ends up getting Soraka too, which is really annoying for my prospects of getting Soraka 3. There was someone else holding a Zoe, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm starting to lose fights. I haven't really naturaled any two-star units except for this Jax two-star, even though I've been holding onto these pairs. I'm a little bit broke because I didn't make 10 at the end of stage uh, 2 because I wanted to hold onto this Nico pair and I never got paid out for it. I never found the Nico too. So I'm getting a little bit scared and uh, I'm thinking if this comp is not that strong, uh, it, it could very well be Jover for me. So we're, we're going to hope that we hit something. We once again, one more shop where we don't really get anything. I'm also holding on to these units, as you can see on the entire right side of my board, as like a potential, you know, if I hit a random Cinder 2 on 7, I'll absolutely just play around that, though it'll be a little bit hard to utilize the Morello, so it's gonna be kind of hard to pick up a Thresh here, which like we could play for. I hit all these faded units, but I say, you know what, like, I'm just gonna level here, roll for the board. I pick up a Diana. I pick up a Lowey 2, which I make, which honestly, knowing the fact that I was gonna hit Diana 2, because, I mean, I had two Dianas, it's pretty unlikely that I was actually gonna, um need this like it, it was probably actually incorrect I, I probably should have just like played for the entire board here and i'm also just getting kind of dizzy in this spot here like i end up uh making gwinsu soraka which i think is fine scales well with the static shiv uh we can actually go back there and look at items because i'm not that i think probably instead of gargoyle maybe it was steadfast heart here uh because i i ended up building declaw eventually onto this diana and it felt amazing so i feel like greeting for the declaw might actually make a lot of sense especially in this lobby where there's a lot of ap so I think maybe Steadfast and then Greed for Declaw would be my best option here. Gurgle, of course, is not bad on Diana, who's going to be taking a lot of aggro in a lot of these fights. Um, but yeah, uh, Augment here, Dynamic Duo is a never. I actually like the idea of Long Distance Pals a ton here, uh, because I'm duo carrying the Soraka, I'm duo carrying this Zoe. The Zoe's getting AP from Arcanist, the Soraka is getting AP from her ability. Um, so I actually really like them like sharing the, the AP. Pick up another Diana here, and I'm like, okay, I kind of need to start like actually pivoting the board, getting my units... Uh, the actual items that they need 
and I make a little bit of a preemptive pivot. This is basically the board that I want to be playing. Um, I just need to get this Alawi out, and normally it's you play Janna over the Alawi um, to get Dragonlord in. Um, but the problem is now my entire board is a bunch of one stars. Like I think this pivot was pretty pre emptive a little bit too early like I, I definitely should have waited until i hit something to start here like the the lux two or something um because now i can roll down a bit more i can sell the allowing now if i want to and this is going to give me the gold that i can use to roll down and hit something like a soraka two i want to dip to 40 gold here to try to pick up some kind of two star unit ideally you know like the zoe two but i don't even have zoe paired here and now i end up in this really awkward scenario where i over rolled i'm sitting on five pairs i think and so i don't actually i think want to sell any of these units i need soraka for the soraka three and i lose this fight and i start going wait this spot looks really really bad and the reason that i wanted to upload this vod is because this spot looks so so bad i also i get wukong here with the cloak which i love i mean this is another sage and another heavenly here so i'm like okay fuck jana i'm just playing the wukong here and this is also how i end up getting towards declaw which i think is really really nice but yeah like in this spot i'm kind of like I'm I'm molding a little bit. I'm like this comp sucks. Like like why did I why did I opt to play this comp? Like this comp is just bad. Um, but I actually don't think the comp is that bad. I roll down some more here because I'm still so many pairs. I finally end up picking up a Zyra two, but I still don't have the Zoe two, which is so so scary. You know she's holding my radiant item and she's a one star unit. Um, but it's okay. We've picked up a few Sorakas. We picked up a few Dianas. You can see already a few glimmers of you know how Diana does work. Diana tanked up a lot of damage in that fight, and you can also see the Soraka damage, a ton of damage, but look how dire my spot is here. We get an encounter here, which is Kobuko Dance. I opt to dance here because I need the gold to roll for my units. I need the components to actually finish itemizing Diana, though I don't really need any more offensive components. I need like one component anvil here, uh, and I end up getting three, which is a little bit too much, but it's okay. I can get Declaw for Diana, and then the other idea is I can make a TG onto my monkey, and I get both, which is nice. So Declaw Diana, PG onto the Monkey King. I uh, end up actually rolling Blue Buff and Guard Breaker, which is a pretty good roll. Um, but the the saving grace for me in this spot, because I'm fighting a pretty strong board here. Uh, I don't. I feel like I should probably lose this fight. Actually, I don't recall if I win or lose this. Look how tanky Diana is with that Declaw. Yeah, I do lose this fight. Dropped at 22 HP. But the only thing that I'm going for me in this spot is that I have three Dianas. If I can hit Diana three, maybe I can stabilize with this board. But yeah, I would say like. This was not by any means a high roll game for this comp. Uh, you know, you guys say VOD review more high rolls or games that aren't high rolls. Well, boom, I got one of my own games that's not a high roll. Uh, like this is a pretty horrible spot. I mean, I definitely think selling the Lux a little bit early contributed to this spot being difficult. But uh, outside of that, you know, it's just that's just life. Uh, the only upside is I'm rolling down here. I find a bunch of Dianas. I decide to hold the Zyra Khan because I'm not actually I feel like this is going to come in later. Uh, and then I pop my anvil here. I end up getting, I, I just want more frontline items at this point. So I go for a gargoyle on the Nico because I'm just like, I, I just, I need more frontline here. Um, I think someone in chat actually said, hey, like, what do you think about playing Xyrocon over the Wukong? And I say, oh, you know what? It's another Ultras, it's Dragonlord. Like, honestly, I could, I could see it. It's like probably better. Like Heavenly and Sage here. I mean, it's nice, um, but I don't really need the attack speed so much, especially with the attack speed Kale. So I think this is actually my best bet. Um, and then my plan here is I'm just going to roll down every single round to 10 until I find a Soraka, uh, and then I'm just going to roll it down to zero every round. So I find this last Soraka, and now I'm rolling it to zero every round. But yeah, we have the Diana 3, and I just want you guys to watch. Watch the tankiness of this Diana 3 every single fight. There's an Aphelios 2 on her. There's this Ari 2 over there. She casts, heals up. Cast gives herself damage reduction. Cast heals up, giving herself damage reduction from the units outside the circle. And look at this. She just tanks the entire board. And also, look at the Soraka damage. She's dealing like 5k a fight, and that's not even Soraka 3. Now I get Soraka 3, which is going to be a better unit to receive all this AP from Zoe. Also, just a better carry in her own right. And at this point, I know it seems crazy, but the board is actually like very, very stable. Uh, even though, you know, I'm 0 gold, I'm 22 HP, like the spot looks dire. But, I mean, just watch my Diana go, man. Just watch her. Every single fight, she just casts. She lives this fight. Half HP. It's not even close. Like, nobody is doing any damage to this Diana with the Declaw, the Gargoyle, and the Crown Guard. It's it's just insanity. Uh, itemize off Carousel. I think I would, you know, I definitely prefer to get the Xyrocon with Gunblade. Uh, the only downside is I don't really have anyone to put the Gunblade on. So I just look for another Nico item. Adaptive Helm here, I think, is fine to get her casting. Uh, it was either Adaptive Helm or uh, there was another tank item on Carousel. But... I was about to say it and then I forgot what it was, but I kind of liked it. I, I don't know. I like Adaptive Helm on these like AP type caster units. Uh, I actually do want to hold on to this Janna because she can very well be our next level up just for another level of Dragonlord. Ideally, it's the Wukong back in, but I don't know if I'm 
gonna find a Wukong on seven. We already found one on seven and the, the Xyrocon, so I, I doubt I'm gonna find another one. But yeah, look, we're fighting this AP board. D Claw's fantastic here. Look, and the damage reduction from Diana in this little thing. Like these backline units are never gonna damage this Diana here. It's not even close. She just full tanks everything and we kill this guy. And I mean, now I'm 22 HP. I, you know, at the start of the stage, I was at the, the bottom of the barrel HP wise. I was like, you know, looking like I was about to go eighth. But now it actually is very, very likely that I top four this game. I like all these people are getting really low. The Cephelios guy hit Thresh three, which is kind of scary. It's going to be a lot more frontline for them. But I think, you know, with enough time, I can get through their entire frontline. Uh, there's the Cinder guy. But once again, you know, the, the D Claw is going to be so, so nice in this matchup here. It's so hard for them to actually get through the Diana. They get through all of my frontline before the Diana, but then just look at this Diana, just full tanking, multiple Cinder casts. We kill off this guy. It is now probably a top four it's definitely yeah it's a top it's a top three after this fight like my god um yeah i don't i don't know i i did not believe in this comp at the start of this game but after seeing diana three with this setup and even just the soraka three i didn't even hit zoe three which is normally who you primary carry in this setup uh, i am i am absolutely a believer and i feel like no one's really talking about this comp it's very very underplayed there are barely any people playing it so i think it's kind of a nice comp to uh to play if you or one of those people who like to play reroll and you want to hit uh, uncontested stuff. I see this guy is digging for um it's it's an eco and he's is he everything must go? Um I think he might be. I, I guess we'll look again. But he's he's looking for a bunch of three stars. Um so he has the you know like the Lee Sin uh, and I'm like, ooh, this is this is really scary. So I'm gonna hold on to these Lee Sins to try to deny him. I just need to do deny an eco. I end up beating this guy's board, continuing my streak, which is amazing. But yeah, holding two Lee Sins is really nice. maybe he's not. If he was everything must go, he would have no no, he is, yeah, he is everything must go. Um, but he's stuck on eight with not a lot of gold, and he's not really close to to a lot, which is really, really good for me. Lee Sin, he has like five. Yeah, he has five Lee Sins at this point, which is the closest he is to anything. And he rolls it down. He's only 10 gold here. So I, my idea is, okay, if I can hold on to these Lee Sins, deny, you know, the everything must go guy is usually the denier. But if I can deny the denier, I will feel really good about this. The other thing is hopefully I can actually win this fight. But my Diana walks up. She's tanking this full Kaisa and this Zaya. Even, even with barely any armor and MR, it's just the Gargoyle that's doing it. Or armor, you know, she's got a lot of MR. I win this fight and wait a minute. Is it possible? Is it actually possible that I could win this game? I just have to deny these units from the everything must go. Uh, I decide to uh, roll down and try to look for Kaisas here because he's now six Kaisas, but he doesn't see any Kaisas. Uh, this guy is telling me all the Lees are telling Aniko, I guess, that all the Lees are gone. But I'm like, uh, like I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not selling them. I, I need to keep him out of the pool so he doesn't hit. I put the Kogma player, and this fight's actually really, really scary because I put my Diana not in front of the Kogma, which allows them to kind of just go through the front line. But still, she lives. Still, the Zoe lives. I win this fight, and now I got one more fight to go to be top two. Uh, just want to deny potentially uh, Elise in from him. Uh, he's not actually like wanting to go for it, I guess. Uh, but this, you know, gives me Elise in too, so I'm like, okay. Fine. And I probably should have just played the Lee two over the Janna here, but I was so locked in trying to roll to deny that I was just holding this Lee Sin on my bench. But yeah, definitely should be Lee Sin two over Janna here. Just steadfast start the Lee Sin. He'll be kind of tanky. Um, but we got hopefully one more fight. I swap this rock at the same size as the Diana, so she can tank very well for her. The Diana gets to walk up, which I like a lot, and she's getting so much gargoyle value here. But just look how little damage this Diana takes, and it's just it's just gargoyle and crown guard is the armor. Uh, and yeah, it's it's a dub. It is a dub versus an eco and it's a win i mean did you guys think that the game was winnable from that spot that i was in i mean maybe because i posted the vod but i was blown away by the fact that this game was a win i thought my spot was really really rough oh this is the game that promoted me to master which is pretty funny now that i'm in gm uh, but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video uh once again if you guys subscribe to the vod channel link is in the description down below you would get to see this vod early uh we're also trying to get it monetized so that i can help out uh the, the editor and give them some revenue from the channel because right now none of the videos are monetized because we don't have a thousand subs a thousand subs and the channel gets monetized i would appreciate it a ton um and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video bye